something to say? Just know we hop this way. Nobody else is suited for this other than us. I know it's crazy, but we work with it and don't give up. Welcome to the show. If you don't know the name, we call it Hop This Way. Welcome back, all our little warriors out there. Welcome to our every time. song. Uh, we have a special Sunday uh, yeah. tongue edition of the Hop Sunday Way Fun Day. Hey. It is such a fun day that even Jeff couldn't make it out. We got the dogs barking. <laughs> the dogs are loving it because uh, this is definitely going to be a fun day for Warrior fans. Um, and I think uh, if you're a fan of character actors that are great villains... Wow, man, do we got something special for you today. Uh, you may, if you're watching this show, you definitely have seen him on Warrior. He plays Mayor Buckley. Uh, that might be a spoiler for some, but uh, we have on with us this week. That's right, Mr. Buckley himself. You've been through a terrible time these last few months. Your father died, your business was destroyed, and now your, your husband has been killed right in front of you. Any one of these events would be more than most could bear. Oh. Mr. Buckley, what are you doing? <laughs> What? Oh, oh. What are you doing? He's gone, man! Ah. What are you doing? Why did you do that? Buckley, get it's up! Here. She's in here! Oh, Help! She stabbed me! Stop! All right, listen. Come on over with us. She stabbed me! He stabbed himself! Let's go! He stabbed himself! Sure he Mr. Buckley, I'm calling a medic. Oh, <laughs> the man himself. That's it. Langley find that guy a therapist. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Langley, for coming on the show. Um, what an epic character you're playing here. What Thank when you. people think of um, Arch Nemesis, when they think of that uh, antagonist, this isn't normally the character they're thinking of, that, that character that's kind of behind the scenes manipulating things. Tell us a little bit uh, on your thoughts on Mr. Buckley. Well, it's great to be here, first of all. So thanks for having me on. And my thoughts on Buckley. God, where do I start? Um, he needs a therapist, man. He's, uh, <laughs> this guy's got some issues, right? That's <laughs> me. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's so great that we're getting to revisit the show again, uh, and we're getting back to it soon because, um, you know, I've had a lot of time to think about, you know, uh, Walter and, uh, yeah. and, and his psychology in the last couple of years. I think you're, you're going to find, uh, when we get back to the show, I think season three, you're going to find the, the, the there are going to be so many more layers to all the characters because all of the actors have had, you know, the last two and a half years really to think about things. Um, but, you know, I don't know where, I think you're going to have to be more specific when you ask me questions about, you know, <laughs> about Walter simply because there is, there is so much to him. Well, um, and I've thought so much about him and, and, and who he is and how he operates and his psychology in the last couple of years. But well, and I guess that, that, that would bring us actually to, uh, to Frank. I, I think, Frank, you've got a great question about, uh, about uh, Buckley's journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. It's great to, great to see you on here. It's, um, but, I, but I was wondering about, because I was thinking about one specific aspect of um, your character, just looking through both seasons, and he, he's always teetering on that edge of losing his cool, it feels like, but he's always got it under wraps, at least when it's in the public eye, right? Like when, mm. when Leary had the knife in his gut, he held it together mm. until everyone walked away and then he threw up. Yeah. When, um, when he had the nightmare about losing his leg, he was mm. by himself, like he was, it was sleeping, he was in his private area. 
So like, yeah. he's always been able to hold it together. It's like it's, it's such a blank slate. Like you wouldn't know he was from the South, right? You would definitely not know he was a Confederate soldier. It's like mm-hmm. how close is he to if you think about him in the future, like how close is he is to, to falling off mm-hmm. or is he gonna mm-hmm. maintain and somehow become kind of like the Don, you know? Yeah, I think that's, you know, that is, I, I think what, what makes him, one of the things that makes the guy such an interesting character is, is, the, is that question, is how close is he to losing it at any given moment? And I mean, he does seem to have such great control and, and such a great handle on his emotions. And what made it really interesting for me studying, you know, I, I've played quite a few characters who suffer from PTSD, mm-hmm. as as does Walter. And, and the, you know, there was, a, a, you know, one of the, the, the traits in a lot of people who suffer from PTSD is, um, is, is that they will very often um, lose their cool in an instant and, mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, kind of snap. And that's what, what for me is, is interesting about him and in, in that he is different and that he really, even though he suffered um, major PTSD in the war, um, you know, was able to reinvent himself and despite his OCD, uh, his, you know, of which there are more than, you know, he has a few um, obsessive compulsive disorders. Um, but in spite of those and despite the PTSD, he is, that his superpower is that he can maintain his emotional even strain. Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, he can, he can, he's, he's constantly, um, he's constantly thinking and he's constantly making, you know, chess moves and staying a couple of moves ahead of his opponents while keeping his cool. And that is, that is one of his superpowers, you know, he's, it's, 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 and it's important, I think, for, because all the characters on the show have their, you know, their strengths and, and because Buckley is one of the few characters that we don't see, uh, using these. Mm-hmm. he has to use other weapons and and uh, so i suppose that you know that that is that is his his main weapon is is um his ability to stay on top of his emotions and and not be a reactive person uh mm-hmm. so in in many ways i suppose you know i like to think that he's he's quite an evolved human being mentally uh oh, emotionally okay even though he's not perhaps the, the evolved in the kind of way that, that we in this day and age would necessarily like a human being to be evolved. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he's, he's, the, he's the beast that Buckley needs to be to survive and to thrive, you know, with the choices that he's made. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think so, I just, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's hard. <laughs> I was muted, but yeah, I think it's hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I you, you did a uh, you mentioned though how everybody's had about two years off, uh, yeah. To, to think about these characters, yes. How how much has that evolved? Like, has how much has it from the day you guys stopped shooting? Your thoughts mm. on who Buckley was to where your thoughts on who Buckley is now? Has that mm. has that evolved and? Has is it a big change from what you see, and how much do you think it aligns with JT? Have you guys had talks about uh, where you see Buckley going in the future? Yeah. So the you know what's wonderful about uh, Jonathan and the writing team is that they all encouraged us to to volunteer thoughts uh, and ideas that we had had um, about the characters and before they got into the writing room, uh, into the writers' room, and and. Um, uh, you know, I, I think you'll 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 certainly see uh, s- some some shifts and some growth and some evolution uh, in Walter Buckley and and in, in all the characters in the, the time that has lapsed. Uh, so yeah, awesome. I can't, I can't divulge anything really, but that, I I think the fans the fans are going to be very happy with where we go in season three. Oh, definitely. I have no doubt about that either. Uh, Rebecca, you had a question for, for Kirk. Uh, sorry, Langley as well. <laughs> so good. I've got yeah. two surnames as a first. As a I know. First name, so you, I know how often I've been, I've been, it's been messing with me all week. I'm not even going to okay, lie. I get my name wrong sometimes, man. It's so good. <laughs> I'm this huge comic book fan as well. And there's oh, yeah. a, a, a Batman character that's has a similar sounding name. So I've been 
messing it up all week all week and matt just keeps laughing at me because he's a batman fan too and it doesn't happen to him at all <laughs> i want him to have my back but he doesn't anyways back not, not go for ahead this. not for this <laughs> not all this. right that's going well um fans has some theories about the red hair woman yeah. Um, something that he might kill them after I wash the hair, <laughs> or uh, maybe he is in love with the nurse who took care of him. Yeah. So, what's your th theory about it? Well, that's it. That? I mean, the the, the 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 latter of those two, where you were bang on the money. It's you know, he's um, he, I suppose he holds in his in his memory banks and in his head and in his heart the uh, this kind of angelic memory of this of the. Uh, of the red-headed nurse um, who got him through that awful amputation. And uh, yeah, and I think if there are any spoilers at this stage, I mean, if people aren't up to speed with the whole of season one and two, then it's their own fault. <laughs> but uh, with the, uh, you know, the amputation, basically, she was an angelic uh, figure in his, in his life. Uh, and so there is that. And there is there is more to that though it's not just it doesn't just end with her so and um i haven't seen scripts yet for season three so i can't tell you whether they've written it in or not but there was there was uh speculation uh with writers with the writers with one writer in particular about um a different red-headed woman who uh, we may or may not discover at some stage Ooh. 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 Uh, other other than the nurse so mm. all right I, I'm, there. I'm, I'm i'm as interested to see where the where that where this goes as you are because i don't know but um but certainly the nurse was was definitely um a figure so the 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 cleansing the washing uh of the red-headed mm. prostitutes um you know that 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 scene that we saw in uh back in season one of him bathing the yeah, uh, redhead prostitute. Was it season one or was it season two? Season two. Oh, yeah. That was season two. That was season two. Um, that was actually, you know, the the washing of her hair was was. I don't know if you remember, but in the amputation scene, there was actually a close up of the nurse, and when the when the surgeon was sawing off Buckley's leg, there was a big good good yeah, splash yeah. Of, of blood in her hair. Oh, and and that yeah. image. So maybe watch that episode oh. again to see that. But th that moment was definitely seared in his memory banks and. And I suppose it is very much like, you know, Lady Macbeth in, in, in Macbeth, trying to wash the out damn spot, trying to wash the blood out. It's kind of, he's revisiting that and constantly right. just wanting to erase the blood, get rid of the blood, cleanse the blood out of it's her like hair. It's the human side of Buckley. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, as, warped, <laughs> as warped and as crazy and as, you know, messed up as it is he, he's i you know i suppose in his, that's in his way you know uh if everyone has their own form of intimacy <laughs> right <laughs> uh we have a, a question here from oh, mike one. baker uh mike yeah. baker asks as an actor how were you able yeah. to craft such a despicable human did you mm. craft the backstory for buckley how are you able to create realistic emotion and behavior for mm. such a racist character who portrayed slavery uh and chinese exclusion yeah supported um say. yeah um yeah so i mean it, it is I, I guess you know it is w w one of the things that people do ask me a lot is you you know that i'm i'm such a mild mannered and i'm not a i'm not a i'm not a dark guy i'm not a um, I'm not overly unpolite or rude to people. I'm, I'm quite a friendly person. So people do ask me quite a lot why I always tend to play such dark and evil characters. And, you know, the simple answer, I suppose, and, and, and Buckley is, is like this. I really just, I enjoy it. It's fun. It's fun getting to explore the yeah. darker side of one's psyche and of human nature with the safety net of knowing that it's it's at the end of the day I can go home and I can wash the makeup and the costume off and I'm I'm Langley again. Right. So um, that is that is I suppose one element of it. Um, it it is it is a lot more fun playing playing dark characters. Uh, it's it's it's. 
Um, but, but, but that aside, you know, in terms of relating to Buckley and finding the parts of me that I can, you know, identify and that I can find in him, you know, that, that is ultimately part of, of, of the actor's journey as well, is to find elements and parts of, of the most twisted, darkest characters mm. um, that we can relate to because it, it is all part of the human, the human story. Mm. And, and what we've always got to remember as actors is that we are portraying humans. And, and so you've, you've got to find the, the parts of their humanity that are beautiful and the parts that are despicable. And that's what I love about Warrior as a show is that it really, all the characters, you know, the, the, the full gambit of, of, of their qualities are on display. And there are no clear cut good guys and bad guys. They okay. are. You know, a, you know, there's a bunch of human beings uh, put in, you know, just really interesting uh, into a really interesting context and time and history. Uh, in terms of, you know, being able to really dive into this and 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 play, um, you know, I, yeah, find the the racist elements of him. The it's very easy as a as a white South African to. Um, to say that I know uh, and have, you know, friends and family members have had fam family members and friends over the years who are who are racist and and sometimes deeply so, and and there's that with the con within the contradiction that I grew up loving a lot of these people or knowing them well and and thinking and being able to see that they weren't purely bad people because of you know racist tendencies. Mm. Um, I guess this is part of of our of, of our struggle right now, and where we are as a as a human family, and needing to to overcome the challenges that we are faced in terms of you know um, discrimination in all its in all its forms and bigotry in all its forms is that it, we, it, it, it's so easy always to fall into a reactive mode and just label people who who are different. And, and, and label people as wrong. And so my struggle as Langley, and my, I suppose one of the, the challenges for me in recent years has been to try and listen to people uh, and, and try and see them and hear them uh, and not just go, you're a fucking racist or you know, you're a fucking sexist or you're, you know, you're homophobic is, is I don't think we can have truly meaningful conversations with people and change people's minds if we just polarize each other all the time. Uh, and if we do listen and actually engage with people and, 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 and give them a shot at redemption, then sometimes occasionally they can redeem themselves. I'm not saying that Buckley's going to redeem himself. I'm just, you know, I'm talking about the bigger <laughs> picture here. No, but, I, um, sorry, Langley. I go I, off I, on I, a tangent again. Sorry. It's funny about it's a brain fog from the COVID. <laughs> the one thing about with Buckley, though, it, it does seem, and I don't know that I'd be quick to label him as a racist. I'd be quick to label him as an opportunist and mm. someone who's looking to kind of just get himself ahead. And well, it doesn't matter just, who he steps on. He doesn't care yeah. what your skin color is, it seems, because he works with my lane. Well, you see, this is the great thing about the show is that it, it's, it's, the characters are evolving and they do evolve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to say he is X, Y, or Z. Right. Um, but, I mean, you know, people show certain tendencies at certain stages in their lives, and and they change and can change and can evolve. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are certain elements, you know, that he aligns himself with that are definitely racist that For we've sure. seen. And there are certain policies that I, I would say, or you know, pretty much in line with what you'd see, you know, in terms of white nationalism, you know, and, and white supremacist behavior these days. Right. Certainly, you know, and 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 let's see where that goes in terms of Buckley's relationship with Leary in season three. You know, is that he's he's identified in Leary um, a potential political ally. Mm -hmm. And and Leary, you know, Dylan's character, you know, I mean, Dean's character, Dylan Leary, certainly is a. <laughs> I wouldn't say he's uh, embracing of of all nationalities. 
and all races. That's and, the uh, nicest way to put that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you had a question for uh, Langley as well. I do. Actually, I want to I want to praise a little bit on the fact that you said like it's so much fun to play villains because as watching the show, right, I was like, man, this motherfucker. Oh, Jesus Christ. But like, again, from tipping, well, again, from taking a step back, you know, with with these two years where, you know, after I watched it, I was like, yo, Langley is killing this shit with he's probably having so much fun with this character. So and plus, like the favorite, my favorite character of all time is like the Joker. So to see like somebody like step into these roles, I'm just like. Oh, he's so fucking good. I love yeah. it from a kid, from from an actor standpoint. I'm like, this is so fucking good. I love it. Um, oh, I want to actually, I want to actually pivot a little bit from the show because um, I, you do like a lot of the Iron Man trainings and just like triathlons and stuff. And me and a group of my friends actually do like Tough Mudders. I don't know if you've heard oh, of those. Nice, yeah, I do. So, I've and, heard of them. I haven't done one, but it looks like fun. It is really fun. It's it's a lot of fun. The what the shit you do, I'm just like my one boy's like, yo, we gotta do this, and I'm just like, I can't swim for shit though. Like I'm a drown within the, like the first the first couple miles. I don't know about this, but props to you, sir. Uh, so the training the training regiments that we both I think parallel into like they're pretty extensive and pretty hard. Um, mm. There are times within like the middle of my training where I'm just like I fucking do not want to any more and mm. i want to know um what have you like during these training um sessions like kind of when it gets to that point how do you break through that past of that that i don't want to and you know how do you endure that fuck it we're just gonna keep it moving until mm. said race or you mm. know event whatever it is yeah look i mean i i certainly am not as um strict with myself in terms of training regimen as I was before I find, uh, you know, I basically just, I get out there and have fun. And if, if I don't feel like, a, like training on a, on a any given day for whatever reason, I'm not, I'm not as strict and I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be. Uh, I, it all, I guess it all depends on, on whether I'm training for an event or not. So, uh, you know, the last couple of years with COVID, there, there just haven't been that many events and, um, I, I, since, uh, October of last year, I actually had to prepare for a role that I wish I could talk about, but I can't, but, oh. but it was, it was, um, uh, basically, um, the producers had asked me if I would put on or be able to put on 10, uh, kilograms. So like 22 pounds of muscle for a particular oh. role. And, um, and obviously as, as a, as an endurance athlete that's 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 difficult right. because you're yeah. you're just you're on your bike or you're riding or you're swimming most you know most days and and you're eating really well uh so uh i to be honest have not done much in the way of cycling swimming and running uh since october of last year i actually kind of went into full i don't know bodybuilding mode and i just i started force feeding myself uh, lots of food and lots of supplements and went into the gym mm. and, and I did put on, I put on 22 pounds. Uh, I won't how, say it was all, all muscle. <laughs> uh, it, it took me three months. It took me three months. Um, oh, November, good. December, January, by the end of January, I, I'd, um, I'd, I'd put on the, the, I'd hit my goal. And then I had two, uh, weeks before I started, uh, filming, uh, in which to to cut cut back by about three three kilograms. So you know, I got it back back down. Basically, my um, my my net gain now, uh, where I am now, is about eight kilograms. No, nine kilograms above where I was. Uh, so yeah, about, about just under twenty pounds or so, or to around twenty pounds. And um, and I'm I've got two weeks left on this job. And uh, and then I'm gonna have to get back into Walter Buckley mode. So then I'll get back on the bike then. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's it's actually been quite nice. My, I've enjoyed the break from the intense training. I've enjoyed doing a different kind of training, uh, and I've enjoyed seeing how my body responds to to different kinds of, of of training as well. The 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 part that I found the hardest was the was the eating. To be yes. honest. Forcing myself it. to eat and to do supplements, 
I, 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 man, I don't want to look at another protein shake again. It's because like, <laughs> there's only I'm, so many I'm different done. things you can do with it. It's just like, ugh. yeah, yeah. Um, it's been quite nice to be honest to actually like uh, suddenly have have guns when I've never really had big biceps or anything before, and it's it's suddenly like I look at myself and I go, "Who's that dude?" Fuck. <laughs> it's Hercules. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you know I do go for the odd bike ride, and uh, it takes a very long time to climb up a hill now. Well, it's <laughs> speaking of. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yes, sure. please do. Yeah, uh, I know you try to become vegan, and mm. the other day you posted on Twitter, oh. so I guess it's okay for you to talk about it that you yeah. quit alcohol. So I was yeah. wondering if it's related to health or the spiritual side, or yeah, um, <laughs> no, it's a good question. So. I think it's a combination of things that, you know, I started in my mid thirties, I, I, I started to take better care of myself. Um, I think I'd had quite a wild time in my twenties and early thirties. Uh, mm -hmm. even though I was by then married with kids, I still enjoyed, you know, drinking quite a lot and, uh, smoked cigarettes. And I, I went and did a, a show. I, I did an HBO series called generation kill. And, uh, we basically, we filmed for seven months straight. And in those seven months, we, we were shooting mostly six day weeks. And I was on the back uh, or in the front of a Humvee playing a reconnaissance Marine. And we had a lot of downtime. And in that downtime, we'd always light up a cigarette. And, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd be, because we were out of town, for the entire shoot, we know we became really tight with each other, the castmates, and we most nights after work we'd have a poker game where there'd be a few beers and and cigarettes. And by the end of that shoot, I was I just knew I was done with cigarettes, and 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 I wanted to get healthy and I wanted to be fit, and and that was kind of when I got into endurance sport and I I, I quit smoking. Oh, look at that. We're hey. quick here. You guys we try to be quick. You're we try to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason um, why you were solo so long. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's where it all started. My kind of journey towards looking after myself, taking better care of myself. And I mean, that, I, I stress that whenever I speak to young actors now, I just say, man, please don't, don't, you know, there, there used to be this kind of glorification of, of living a wild life for actors and 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 i just remember how actors like peter o'toole and richard harris and uh, you know kind of guys like that were kind of glorified and deified because of how tough they were and how how crazy they were and how they would they would arrive to you know set in the morning still drunk from the night before and there would be this kind of this kind of reverence about it and i you know i think about it now and if, if an actor were to arrive on set wasted now I would be so pissed off, yeah. I, you know, and, and, yeah. and the, the truth is that, that almost every actor on the planet would be. And I think that's how it's, you know, it's changed. So whenever I do speak to actors now, young actors, and, they, and I see that they're not looking after themselves, I, I just say, listen, man, you know, you want to be in this for the rest of your life. You want to be working until you're 100 if you can. And, and the, your best shot at doing that is by looking after yourself. So just stay fit, stay healthy, eat, eat right, Try and you know drink, do everything in moderation, and please, God, don't smoke cigarettes. Yes, uh, please, I agree. As as a fellow, are you? Uh, she said you tried to become a vegan. Are you? Are you vegan or? So uh, you know, I, I I lived in in LA for for like three years. And, oh, you had um, to be. Oh, so that was no, mandatory. I had, I had I you know I had lots of friends who were you know I, I I'm certainly into animal rights and uh, and I I do. There's a part of me that wishes I could be. I could live without meat and I, I, I do try to eat less meat and I right. try to eat, you know, good, healthy meat. I, I don't, I, you know, the beef that I eat is grass fed and I try and eat organic grass fed beef and, and the same goes for lamb and, and, and any kind of sentient being that I eat. And it's, uh, it's something I, that I'm conflicted by. Uh, I know that there's a part of me that knows that I, you know, if we want to be more evolved as human beings, we should stop eating animals. Uh, I'm not there yet. It's a, it's a struggle. I did, I did manage a month of veganism when I lived in LA 
and yeah. I came back to South Africa and I had um, some lamb chops put in front of me and I, <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah, that was it. And, uh, lamb's awesome. Lamb Lee. Well, yeah. Um, uh, I, I, but, uh, I, I, you Sorry, I'd be remiss if I, I waited too long. We have uh, joining yeah. us as well our other yeah. uh, co-host, the Asian hip hop hippie herself, Miss Stephanie Young Pratt. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Up early well, thank on you for the, that. Uh, West Coast uh, over there, Pacific Coast. Yes, I'm reporting from Hawaii. So thank you so much, and sorry for the delay. This is very exciting. So, you know, catch me up to speed a little bit. I know I missed a little bit, but, you know, yeah, the Re Buckley talk. Ooh. Right. Rebecca had actually just asked me, and I, I'd still not go around to ans answering properly about my, my drinking. Uh, I, oh. uh, I, I stopped drinking alcohol about two and a half years ago, and Ooh. she asked, you know, the motivations behind that, whether they were health-driven, health-related, which they, they definitely were. So that's a part of, uh, of it, Rebecca, is looking, taking better care of myself. Uh, the other, the other, the honest truth is that I, I think, you know, everyone has a quota of alcohol that they should drink over a lifetime. And I crammed mine into the first 45 years. So uh, Brett's, Brett's <laughs> looking Brett. at you. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Waiting yeah. for yeah. you to train. See you, uh, in June. And see you in June. <laughs> yeah, man. We are, we are so blessed and lucky to have the he, Brett is, he is he's a god of of stunt coordination oh and, my uh, lord Don't he is so started. good and we're so excited that we're getting him back i mean we are, yeah yeah he's definitely uh you, you guys have got this show it, it amazes me the amount of talent that surrounds this show from from acting to production to to writing to to Brett freaking Chan. We're we're talking Last Samurai. Brett Chan. Yeah. We're talking. Um, oh my God, the list can go on. He's got the new Halo yeah. series coming out as well. I mean, Brett yeah. is is on another yeah, planet. And yeah. you've got JT. You've got yourself. This is your second time working with JT as well. Um, yeah. That's where. And it. And with someone, whom? Someone mentioned it to me the other day and because Lonnie Penner's there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. See, when someone Friendly mentioned show. to me that you were on Banshee, I was like, wait, the whole reason why I even watched Warrior in the first place was I heard it was a JT show and Hoon was going to be on it. And I was like, what? And I went back and watched <laughs> season three. Yeah. Talk to me about, well, let's all just see. <laughs> I'm going to get chills. So we can get to it. Well, what's going on, Colonel? Everything okay? Look, Sheriff, I can only imagine how boring and insignificant your life must be, but honestly, I don't give two shits. If you don't have a reason to be here, then get the fuck off my base! I got six million reasons. <laughs> I mean, if nice anyone guy. hasn't watched that show, I mean... That I, show I is intense. Order, but Banshee, <laughs> Banshee is like an adrenaline ride up here, and Warrior is such an adrenaline ride in itself. But it's almost mm -hmm. like that's what you would take to come down. <laughs> is the Warrior to come down off of Banshee? I oh, mean, yeah. especially mm -hmm. wow. Um, I, I, if you haven't seen Banshee, I, I'm sorry about the spoilers here. But how many shots did you take from that shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, uh, yeah, um, a few. <laughs> a few. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> Kevlar, the Kevlar was good. The, the Kevlar, Kevlar was the good. The Kevlar did its job. The Kevlar did its job. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was a very, very interesting and very exciting sequence to shoot. I mean, it was all, that was Greg Yatanis' episode or one of Greg Yatanis' episodes, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, the head cam. I mean, it was all half half the episode was basically on shot on head cams, um, yeah. uh, you know, which was and it was and the whole heist was was on head cam. I'd forgotten about that. That was, uh, yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Such that was crazy. That what was is fun. It like when you hear people come up to you and mention uh, shows like Banshee or Warrior, which mm. both have kind of got that little bit of a cult following. Like, there were huge hits on on Cinemax. Yeah. But you know, it, 
if you didn't have that, especially like a lot of people like myself who are in Canada, we didn't yeah. have access to that until it showed up on Showtime. Yeah. Is it is it special to you? Is there is there some kind of kindred spirit or friendship you feel with fans like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it's especially I suppose when the show means a lot to me as well. And, uh, you know, the great thing about Warrior and the great thing about Banshee is that I've formed some of the best friendships in my life on these shows. Uh, and certainly uh, the, the one thing about Warrior is, that, you know, it, you were talking about how talented everyone is um, on the show and the, all the different departments. But, you know, the, the other great thing about the show and one of the reasons why we all love doing it so much is they're just such wonderful people on the show. We all love going to work every day. Everyone loves going to work every day. I'm currently working with a lot of the same crew uh, f that we've worked with on Warrior who will be coming back for season three as well. And they, they just, they miss everyone. They, they, they can't wait. They're so excited that we're going to be starting up season three soon. And it's, it's, you know, that's generally the feeling amongst the entire cast when everyone comes to work. Uh, we love our directors, we love our writers, we love our makeup artists, we love our stunt personnel, we love our production assistants, we love you know, the, the camera operators, we love the, the, our camera departments, it, amazing. Uh, we, we love our sound guys. I mean, it's, 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 it's the dream show in every way for an actor to work on because we're working with such amazing people, such amazing material, and everyone's really nice. And then the dream was answered for a season three. Yeah, man. That's one of my questions that you have a long list of projects that you uh, have been involved in projects mm. with uh, many star casts like Samuel L. Jackson, George Foster, Juliette mm. Binoche. If um, you have a fight scene with Patrick Schweiz in a TV series. Yeah. <laughs> and... You watch that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I think you probably have the longest uh, um, uh, Credits. You, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. Mm, yeah. But is really Warrior the coolest cast? The coolest. Um, without a doubt, without a doubt, this is this is my dream job. Woohoo! Um, if, mm. if I could, if if I could do, if I could do this show, you know, for the rest of my life, and not do another <laughs> job, I'd be happy. Oh. Wow. Honestly, I mean, I can seasons. Yeah. yeah. So Jason yeah. said this. You said it. I think yes, it's please. Everybody has said yeah. this has been their Hello, dream. Hello, it's beautiful. All right, wow. then. Listen, if it's going 10 seasons, how are we getting rich back? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. Going to turn back in. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, I, we, we kept story. saying that we're going to have it come back in through Perry. But what if we have uh, somehow Buckley brings in Bolo's twin as oh. his enforcer? Ooh. Yeah, you know, everyone needs an enforcer, uh, just inc saying, including, including wow. Buckley, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely will. That's so fun. Um, Sean Jarvis says, you can see the genuine love between cast and crew, and it makes the mm. show so much more, uh, so much more. It, it really does. It's uh, mm -hmm. such a great show. Uh, Frank, you had another question as well. Uh, yeah, no, it's also just like, mainly what you were saying just now about the passion of the cast and the crew. It seems like, you know, all the folks we've been able to see and talk to is just, that, that passion does seem to, to kind of echo what some of the other folks were saying here. It's like, it kind of shines through in the, in the acting, right? It kind of shines through everything mm -hmm. about the show. It's like, I guess that's why yeah. we get drawn in so much because, you know, indirectly yeah. we're getting it from you guys, right? So that's kind of yeah. like, and we always talk about how there's, there's no throwaway characters. There's nothing, there's no character that doesn't have something else to them that we're not quite seeing. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when Rich was on with us, he was talking about how, for Bolo, even though Bolo was a limited character in terms of his number of appearances, he imagined a backstory for him. And I guess, yeah. like, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, package this question together because I want to ask you a couple of things. <laughs> so far, you haven't, your character hasn't had to get his hands directly dirty, right? The closest he came was when he hit himself with the scissors in mm -hmm. front of Penny, right? So, so, um, paper knife, but yeah. Yeah. Paper <laughs> knife, yeah. Paper knife, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so what, what do you think? is your back, your character's backstory that could potentially get him to do something to get it, to actually get his hands dirty. Cause so far he's been successful in avoiding it as a politician. Mm. What if he can't and like what in his backstory do you think might 
dictate how he reacts in those situations. Okay, well, you know, just bear in mind that this is all just, you know, conjecture and, mm. um, and um, I have no inside information as to what the writers have in store for season <laughs> three. But, um, you know, I'm, I'll just put out there that he, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was a soldier, mm. um, uh, albeit for the Confederacy, but he, he was in, involved in the war and, um, you know, a lot of those, those Southern boys could fight. So, mm. you know, there, there's, there's certainly something uh, in, in terms of the physicality um, that, that he could bring at some stage that we don't, we, we, we don't, we're not aware of. And, and then, you know, there was also, I suppose, um, in season one, um, the writers did set something up there for, I suppose, Buckley to... Um, I'm trying to think of the line that I, I that it was. Uh, it was basically the scene with 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 me and and Dylan Leary up when he gets me up against the carriage, and I, mm -hmm. and I think I said, I think oh, the words were, "Trust me, Mr. Buckley, you don't know men like me." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you've never met men like me. Yeah. And um, that was true. I mean, yeah, and I, I think that, yeah, that that gives a hint as to uh, the possibility that Buckley. There is a lot more to him that that we just haven't seen yet, and that um, you know, just you know, don't write this guy off because he has a disability. Mm -hmm. He can still look after himself, and he's and he's a survivor. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes survivors have to fight dirty, but they, they survive. Mm. That king's multi-purpose, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that it is. Um, <laughs> I've always, I've always. Thought, Yes, this is the season where the writers are going to say Buckley draws his story. Yes. <laughs> that would be nuts. It's got a Suddenly single shot, yeah. single shot bullet in it. Single uh, shot bullet, or it's yeah, or it's a katana blade. And she's, you know, like, Ooh. <laughs> what is that, Doctor No? <laughs> that would be ill. I like it. Uh, Steph, you had a question as well. Oh, actually, two two parts. One one is actually related to the question of alcohol because you don't drink yeah. and you know, anymore. What? And this is the comical part that I'm thinking about because of you know mostly Asian cast. How yeah. when people are hanging out, how many people had the Asian glow? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's you know, so I was because I get it. This is how, how long. Well, this is how long ago we we filmed. The last time when we wrapped season two, I was still drinking alcohol. That was more than two and a half years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't speak for everyone else, but I certainly had a bit of a glow. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, there there actually there are a few members of the cast who don't drink. Uh, some simply uh, because they, they, they're just really healthy people and have chosen not to. And, I mean, you know, I love wine. I really miss it in, in uh, mm. many ways. I just know that I, had a, I was developing what I consider an unhealthy relationship with mm. it. So yeah. um, I was fortunate enough to, to identify that. And, and I just made a choice that I'm so happy I did make uh, in, mm -hmm. in stopping you know, um, but I mean, you know, a lot of the, the, the most members of the cast do enjoy having a, you know, getting together for a couple of drinks, at least on the weekend. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll often do that. And I, I've, 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 I've now, I'm, I'm now an expert on zero alcohol beer and I've actually, <laughs> become, I've actually managed to find a few zero alcohol wines that I, I'll even drink just to keep my girlfriend company in the evening. So I don't, nice. I don't feel like I'm missing out. Right. And, nice. Uh, but but yeah, we definitely enjoy. Um, there's some very, really talented musicians. I'm sure you're aware and amongst the cast. And um, you know, so we've got Jonathan, we've got Joe, who can you know, and Perry, uh, who Brad. you know, Brad, yeah, Kieran. I mean, it's you know, the, yeah. there are, there are a lot of people who are you know really good musicians and singers. And so we get together and uh, have a few drinks and have some barbecue and. I Brides, love it. As we call it in South <laughs> I love the family feel and, for this. Yeah, and uh, and certainly there will be, you know, um, I think I think we'll be lo looking forward to that, and just we, we're probably just going to have to do it in in uh, 
slightly different conditions in season three. I think that we'll probably find that, you know, COVID is going to be a part of, of our life for mm -hmm. a while. And, uh, uh, and certainly being on set here at the moment on a, on a different show, I'm, I can tell you that, you know, there, there are strict and, and careful COVID protocols being adhered to on, on sets here. So mm -hmm. I imagine, you know, that'll be part of our life in, in, in shooting season three. Uh, so I, I imagine the cast will again, be pretty much, you know, form pretty much of a, a bubble, and mm -hmm. and we we'll continue to to do what we like to do, which is hang out together and and socialize and and look after each other. And and there will be some. We've had some new arrivals in the off season, and um, no. so there'll be some, oh. some cast, cast members arriving with uh, with little ones to shoot season three. Oh. <laughs> oh wow! I'm not one of them. Mine are. Mine are <laughs> now, have, has there been any announcements yet? Like, I don't ha like. Have you been privy? Like, is there anything yeah. that's been made aware to the public about mm -hmm. any of these new casts, uh, cast hirings? Um, ah, you see, I wasn't talking about those kind of uh, cast arrivals. Oh, just babies. babies. I was talking about little ones. Oh, little, little. Yeah, where's the friend? Oh, there. Little, little. <laughs> <ones. Okay. laughs> Mini me's. My bad. So my bad. A few of our cast members have uh, procreated in the off season. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. Well, well I think so the then, serious. But I do know that there will be some new cast members appearing, uh, some new characters, uh, and I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> well, my serious question yeah. <laughs> was more about, you know, I mean, I'm the one who, you know, usually rants about representation. So, yeah. you know, it's what's really interesting for me is watching the role uncover mm -hmm. a lot of the history. So how did that feel for you to really be, you know, representing all the politicking behind the history of what's happened mm. in the U S how did that feel? Mm. I mean, when you were learn, you know, you're obviously, you know, it's the script you're, you're learning it, you know, I mean, you're, you're involved, you're in the character. How did that feel playing mm. that role and being a part of that part of history as far as the politics? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, mixed feelings in the, in this, the sense that I, I have a very clear, uh, idea on where I stand politically and it's uh, certainly um, you know very different um, to where Walter Buckley where Walter Buckley stands politically mm -hmm. um, I, I when I when I when I lived in the States I, I did get very caught up and very involved and, and was quite vocal uh, in terms of the politics there I had, I had moved to the US uh, with certain expectations, I had arrived in the midst of uh, or the beginning of the second Obama administration. And, you know, I literally got my green card in my hand uh, a couple of weeks before uh, Trump was voted in. Oh. And, um, you know, I, I guess, the, the, look, I won't say that was the only reason, but it was certainly one of the one of the driving factors in me moving back to South Africa. Um, so, um, I think, I, I, you know, I, and what's happening now in the world as well with, with, with the Ukraine and with Russia, mm -hmm. I, I do, and with, with Putin, I, I feel the world had got to a, a place where we were like the old traditional, uh, patriarchy of, 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 you know, middle-aged white men fucking up our world uh, was kind of nearing an end. And I do feel that your Trumps and your Bolsonaro's and your Putins uh, are very much uh, the death throes. It's like the last, you know, it's, it's almost like they, they know they're on the way out. They, they know that we've got to a place where, where this, this is not acceptable anymore. And, um, and we, we as, as people have, have got to a stage where we've evolved, we've, we've moved past this and we are moving through this and past this and we're moving into a, a better way of being. And it's almost as if this is the last struggle as they are, you know, I don't want to use this analogy because it's, it's quite brutal, but, but being that the patriarchy is, is we, we, we've finally got to a place where we're holding its head underwater and we're drowning it and it's kicking its legs up. Uh, in, in, in its kind of death throes. And that's, I think, what 
where we are now. Mm. Uh, oh. And um, yeah. Mm. yeah uh, I mean, I, I've forgotten what the question was. I know, <laughs> I see, and I, I didn't necessarily expect it. You know, I didn't have to have such a serious answer from you. It was really like, how, you know, you in that role, Again, that tells me and shows us, you know, where you're coming from, even more so being in that role, mm. having to play that role. Mm, yeah. mm. I mean, so yeah. that must be uh, so that, that is uh, intense, intense. That is, mm -hmm. that, is, that is and that is challenging. But then again, as I, I touched on at the beginning of the show, it's 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 coming back to the humanity of it all. And it's that remembering that even these monsters are human beings. And there mm -hmm. was, and they, are, and they were once someone's sons. And, my mother. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. No. I was just gonna say, my mother texted and sent me this picture because she's listening and watching. Yeah. And she, she made you think of this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, she loves you. She's like, I love everything that he's saying right now. You know, for sure. That's from my mother. Uh, uh, send her love, man. Yeah. Send her love. Oh. Yeah. Uh. But uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No. When, I, when I, mom texts, I, I, yeah. it's, it, everything listen. goes on. Like, oh, oh. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Quite right. Too. 68 Quite right. years old, and I'm still afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not glad going to see. She commands respect. Yeah, we, need, we, need, we, need, we, need a, we need a few women like her in, in uh, running a few more countries around the world. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And it, yeah. not to get political, but it, it does, it always kills me that the most, kind of benevolent and forward thinking and progressive countries in the world are have women heading the countries yeah, and, and, yeah. or they have yeah. in the past and they're not yeah. afraid like they're not afraid they're just get mm. me the best person for the job who's thinking about the people mm. which, yeah you know which look is i mean the thing thinking. is one never wants to generalize and you mm. know but to, to generalize you know women women approach things from a different very different perspective and with different priorities and and for the most part i do feel to generalize women are heart driven and and men are ego driven yeah and 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 thank god we're we're moving towards a place where that is changing and we're talking to our kids more about the right things mm -hmm. and 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 we we kind of we're growing we're getting there but you know i think i think we, we we need to let, let let some leaders. We need to give leaders who 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 approach things from a heart perspective. We need to give them a chance because yeah. because we've been we've been giving leaders who who approach things from an ego perspective. We've been giving them a chance for thousands of years, and they mm. fucked things up completely. Yep. So you know what have we got to lose? No. Well. I think a good that's a good segue Ooh. into into Matt's question because hey, Mr. Ego. No, I'm just I'm <laughs> <laughs> funny, Matt. I'm oh. kidding, brother, brother. Chua, oh, you, I love you. You fucking I funny, you. huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I needed my okay. segue. I needed my okay. segue, India. You, right? you, you are very lucky. We live in different countries, buddy. <laughs> 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 Even though you're only like a six hour drive away, so it don't matter. Right it's fine. <laughs> but um <laughs> oh man, fuck you. Not I'm just like <laughs> that's what I do. That's that's, that's my yeah. my whole role here as uh head of this Tom. Oh my god. <laughs> but yes, okay. Matt, you had a question. I'm sorry, buddy. I did, I did. After you threw me off, you so that's what I do. Um <laughs> so um this this I either pivot to my next question or continue on with this one, depending upon what it is. So as I was doing a little investigative journalism, I heard I saw I read not heard or saw. I read that one of your parents, since we were talking about parents, was a poet, poetry, did poetry. Yeah. yeah that's my Have you ever dabbled? Have you ever written? And would you be able to share some if so? <laughs> Well, okay, so I'm, I, I don't think I've really ever dabbled in poetry other than when I was a kid at school. Um, I've written a couple of pilots um, that I don't think I would share with anyone <laughs> right now. Um, but I, I did write, I did write a novel during uh, during lockdown. You know, there was a period of a, a year where I didn't work as an actor, so I had to do something creative, and I, I, so I ended up writing a, a novel. 
which was largely inspired by people in my life. Uh, but it is a work of fiction. And the only person at the moment that has read it is my partner, Sarah. And uh, she was, it was, the response was encouraging. So I'm doing like a, a pass at it and ed editing it. And I guess the next step is to be brave and give it to uh, a publisher to read and uh, see where we go from there. I was going to say, are we going to see this? Pub yeah, you know what? It, it, it would actually make a good film as well. So, so I guess, Ooh. you know, and, and a, lot of, a lot of it is set in the Caribbean because my dad is from there and it's the story is set there. So I'd love to go and spend some time shooting a film there. So, mm. all right. So now I'm going to do a little, I'm going to do a little dream casting then. Say we turn this into a, uh, uh, a streaming show or a film, whichever you would prefer based on your work. <laughs> who who would be the, sh the 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 showrunner, and who would star, or would any of those give it away as to what the story is about? Yeah. So, like, uh, who's your antagonist? Who's your protagonist? Right. And who's the showrunner? Uh, I'm afraid it's 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 not the kind of of uh, I don't think it's the kind of show that would appeal to warrior fans. Uh, You'd be surprised. There's a wide, <laughs> there's a wide yeah. variety, as you can see yeah. just from this cast here. Yeah. Well, you know, look, the um, because the central character was based largely on myself, uh, because it was kind of from my perspective. I guess I would cast myself as the lead. Uh, hey, yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. Then I'd have to come up with someone to play my dad, um, and I'd have to come up with someone to play my daughter. And I'd have to come up with someone to play my lover. Uh, and then various family members and people on the island of, of St. Vincent in the Caribbean, which is where it's set. So, God, I don't know, man. Uh, I haven't even thought about that far. I've got to get, let me get the book published first. <laughs> let's, take, let's take it from there. Why don't you, I, I, so, come when back I heard on, it, I was I'll like, come oh back on the God. show in a year's <laughs> time and you can, you can just say, so how's, how's the book coming along? And, <laughs> and have you, have you, have you uh, given any thought to the question that I asked you a year ago? And right. I'll give you an answer. Writing this okay. down oh, how's that? right now. I okay. got you. <laughs> let's, let's, okay, let's be honest. She was just looking for a role. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so done. Yo, what, what is, what is about Sunday Fun Day today that you want to expose my shit? What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> I suppose I could, I could turn the character of my English daughter into an American son. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, hey, if he's beige, that's me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, now, Rebecca, did you have another question? Yeah, speaking of mothers, <laughs> mm. I know that you're a very sensitive person. You, we have spoke about it uh, just now. And mm. your father was is a poet, art teacher, Mm. And I wanted to know uh, about your mother, how, mm. inf uh, how she influenced you in your personality. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Massively um, is the answer. So um, my dad, uh, who is a lovely guy and is, was a very talented uh, uh, poet and then publisher and English lecturer, Bless his uh, soul, was not a great, um, didn't do a great job the, as, as a dad, the, you know, first time around. And he left when, when I was quite young. Uh, so he basically exited the picture when I was 12 uh, to, to pop up periodically through various stages in my life. And I'm, I'm glad to announce that he is still in my life and is, uh -huh. you know, he's, he's still around. Uh, he just... And he's a great guy and I have a great relationship with him. It's just not, <laughs> it wasn't maybe the relationship I wanted to have with him when I was uh, growing up. So my mother was a single mom uh, and had three sons who she got through school and university single-handedly. Uh, and she did it all in terms of the, you know, uh, she got very little as financial assistance. So she did that almost single-handedly. She worked, um, incredibly hard uh, for that and so I suppose I was taught an amazing work ethic by my mother and I was also taught um, the value of hard work and and seeing it pay off so um, 
I, I guess I have that. And, uh, you know, she, she had to be in many ways both mother and father. So um, although I've certainly had many shortcomings as a dad, uh, and there's, I left lots of room for improvement. <laughs> um, uh, th th there was certainly, you know, she, she, she taught me how to, I suppose, walk through life and walk an ethical line and try and be a good person, try and be conscientious. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I learned a huge amount from her. I was massively inspired by her and I still am to this day and have a huge amount of respect and love for, uh, the amazing woman that she is and that she was. Nice. Give it up well, for mothers. Yeah. Mothers. Ah. <laughs> Give it up for mothers. <laughs> it's, it's good to love and fear them. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's also true. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get the last round here because we, we've had Langley here for, for a long time now. Uh, and I know it's getting late uh, in South Africa. So, Frank, we're going to go with you, Steph. Matt, and we will uh, close things up there. So, Frank, what you got, buddy, for your last question? Um, not well. Just, just kind of going back off of um, what we were what we were talking about earlier with your character. Um, with with the uh, with what you can tell us from season three, like, is there gonna be any out of commission period for for Buckley because of where he ended up physically at the end of season two, or is he is he is he gonna be kind of on the scene right away again? Yeah, he'll be on the scene. I mean, if you remember at the end of season, end of season two, physically he was okay. He just had his arm in a sling, and uh, uh, you know he was uh, he was good to go as the new mayor. Hmm. So he's he's certainly going to be uh, fit as a fiddle in terms of his arms. Uh, but he's uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. I, mean, I don't like know it. what else to say. I don't want to add any, <laughs> anything else. Uh, <laughs> he, he gets uh, it done. <laughs> he, he he gets it done. Yeah, uh, he'll be good Steph. to go. Miss Steph, I I was just wondering what was your least favorite scene Ooh. in the first two seasons. Um, mm. wow. Um, my least favorite scene. Like either really sure. rough to film or just you know um, yeah hmm. yeah um, I, I honestly <laughs> no I, they're all fabulous I don't have, they they are I mean there there is no there's no part of this this of this warrior experience that I have not enjoyed. Um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything that was, you know, physically unpleasant or or, or challenging in a in a way that mm. made my life really uncomfortable. But um, I mean, you know, the I suppose you know the 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 only scenes that are uh, un, in any way um, difficult physically um, are the scenes where there are lots where there is a lot of walking. Uh, because mm. I do wear a really restrictive uh, brace on my leg in two different parts. So we have a, you know, we try and uh, we, we basically took the, um, a, a, a genuine 19th century prosthetic limb and uh, the brace part of that, which is, you know, a kind of steel, um, uh, steel, uh, what are the words? Those hinges. Uh, what's it? Yeah, basically hinges that go on mm -hmm. either side of my knee and then are strapped with a, a leather, um, a leather, a big leather brace that is that is tied together with leather wow. laces. Mm -hmm. um, I wear that every time I shoot uh, underneath my pants, and then on my on my ankle, um, I have a um, a carbon fiber ankle brace that restricts the movement of my ankle so that my foot will move in the same way that the old wooden prosthetic limb right. would move. It, it, it restricts my, my freedom of movement so that, um, you know, I'm not having to fake a limp. I'm, I'm really walking with one because I, I'm, my, my movement is so restricted and it's as, as close as we could get that restriction to, to him Buckley actually wearing, uh, uh, having a, a proper genuine prosthetic uh, wooden limb. So, uh, you know, when the shooting day is long, at the end of the day, I can tell you when I take that off, 
the, the <laughs> relief is immense. Mm. So any day that I have a lot of walking, um, it is, it is, it is, it's physically, I don't ever want to say it's unpleasant because I'm always just so happy and grateful <laughs> to be working, but it's, 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 yeah, I guess anything where I'm, where I'm spending 12 hours in the brace and I'm walking around and yeah. that, that would be my least favorite to shoot. Right. Which has got to be pretty hard too for you as, as, uh, well, you're a physical actor. A lot of the roles you play, you, you do a lot of fight scenes. And, and mm. to go from an like basically an action star to mm. such a, I don't want to say not physical, but it's because mm. of your, your invalid status that you can't yeah. be quite so uh, physical. Mm. Was, was that hard, you know, a, a hard transition for you? Or was that kind of a relief? Um, I think, you know, uh, it has the pro, you know, there's pros and cons to it all. <laughs> Generally, it means that I have more dialogue to memorize because they, <laughs> <he's that guy. laughs> so they, they give me the dialogue and then the other guys get to go out and, and have all the fun. And, right. uh, uh, but no, no, I mean, it's, you know, I think, Every every cha every character comes with its 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 challenges, both uh, from an emotional, mental, and physical point of view. And uh, and and Buckley, you know, has his specific challenges. And uh, I'm I'm hopeful that they'll be, you know, they're going to work in the, some some physical stuff for Buckley. Some some. <laughs> hope, I'm hoping there'll be some uh, very tricky physical situations that he has to get out of at some stage where he has to fight. I'm sure that's coming. I'm sure that's something that a lot of the fans want to see. Uh, speak, yeah. Speaking of fans, <laughs> Derek Chin says, uh, movie TV show fans often identify an actor with the role they're most known for. So for Warrior yeah. fans, many will see the name Langley Kirkwood and maybe mm. conjure up a negative, though for some sympathetic image. Most wow. of us obviously will see a terrific actor. Thanks for wow. this great interview. Hell yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I Thank mean, you. All right, Derek. <laughs> That's Thanks, almost Derek. like um, the comparison to wrestlers back in the day when they were still going with the gimmick, where going with the work, they would say. And yeah. if, a, if, if you were a heel and people mm -hmm. genuinely hated you in real life, <laughs> yeah. could, like the, the, the wrestler was like, I did my job. Like I, I'm, yeah. I'm the best actor in the world. Um, <laughs> So I, I would imagine it's kind of the same there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if everyone is hating me and they're wishing me dead, then I've done my job. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I say the same thing about my ex-wife. My work here is done. <laughs> Damn. Um, Eka, did you have a, no, a so final good. question before Matt goes? Or did you, did you have a final question before Matt? Yeah, I want to know uh, what is his expectations for season three. Of course, we have talked about mm. uh, a bit, but mm. uh, what are you expecting to see? Um, make it alive through season three to get to season four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is uh, this is a character that at some stage, you know. The audience is gonna is gonna want this guy to die, so I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping to make it through to the end of the final season, and and who knows, maybe by then he will have evolved so beautifully that the audience will actually go, you know what, we want Buckley to live. Of course we do. He needs another chance. Great death in the final, the hero, death death in the final yeah. episode of the final season. Yeah. The hero is only good. When they have a great antagonist, so. Oh, well, there we go. And Kai <laughs> never died. Kai never died on uh, Banshee. On Banshee, right? Oh, Kai made it well. to the very end. I'm pretty sure he didn't even die at the the end, and he was the big antagonist. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and everyone wanted him dead. I think. Yeah. So there's yeah. there is there is hope out there. Uh, hope. Money, money, Matt. <laughs> you have got uh, Tong trivia. Oh yes. We have a segment here on the show where I have uh, 10 random questions for you that you don't have oh to God. think too too much okay. on. Or maybe you do. It okay. depends. However it is. And, There's uh, COVID once... brain fog. I'm, I'm just putting that, dis <laughs> that, that disclaimer out there before we get going. 
Well, you think yeah. harder. I'm just kidding. No, you're, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but after you answer all 10 of these questions, we will know you much, much better. And then you will then be initiated into our tong, the hop this way tong. So are you okay. ready, Langley Kirkwood, to oh, go God. through tong trivia? <laughs> yeah, you take that sip of water. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to go. All right, here we go. Number one, app on your phone, you're always on. Mm. Yeah, um, Instagram probably. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my kids only communicate with me on Instagram. Days, so <laughs> <laughs> that's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. It's always the DMs. It's like, yeah. hey, dad. <laughs> okay, question number two. Yeah. Uh, superpower you would want to have, and would you use it as a hero or a villain? Ooh, I like that. Um, telepathic powers, being able to read people's minds, and definitely as a hero. Yeah, oh. I like this. Um, question number three your favorite childhood memory? Wow. Um, Oh. Oh. Um, you know what? My favorite childhood memory is most probably fishing with my grandfather when I was around four or five years old. Oh. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Question I can never keep count, so we're just going to keep it moving. If you could create the best slice of pizza, what would be on it? Ah. Oh. So, uh, I do have a, an amazing slice of pizza. It is my favorite. And it really is quite simple. It's, it's, I don't know. If, uh, on the West Coast, there is a, a pizza chain called Z Pizza. And I don't know if I know that there were some at various other places around the US at one stage. I don't know if there still are, but Z Pizza made just the most amazing Napolitana pizza. And it was literally just the most amazing, simple base with uh, fresh tomato slices and mozzarella and fresh basil. And, mm. and honestly, that straight out of the pizza oven was uh, that was my favorite. That was Z and, pizza. And that simple Z Pizza. And you said it's on the yeah. West Coast? It is. It's down in Laguna oh. Beach. Um, oh, oh, and, okay. and I think there's I think there's there's a couple uh in LA as well. All right, I'm so still waiting for there that. to be a proper vegan pizza. Like they, they they've they've mastered a lot of things. They just can't master yeah. melting cheese quite yet. Melting the cheese, the cashew, cashew kind of cheese. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> That'll get there. That'll yeah, get there. Yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there. <laughs> Can't can't be good old pizza though. The real real one. Um, here we go. Next question. <laughs> Name your biggest pet peeve. Ooh. Um, actors arriving on set unprepared. Hey. hey okay. Yeah. Very good one. I like that one. Um, one place you haven't been to, but would like and would like to go. St. Vincent in the Caribbean. Uh, okay. You've never been? You've never been? Never been. Never wow. Been. Yeah. Steph, yeah, have you? Like... No, but remember, I mean, oh. he he wrote his book. I've and you know, we buried there. Exactly. My lived there and my brother has lived there. Yeah, I've never been. So that is definitely on the list. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Next one. Who would you want to play you in a film or series about your life? Well, we already answered that one. I know we kind of did. <laughs> we need but that young. Was, but that was in the who's fictional. Gonna be young one. Lang yes. Who's going to uh, play young Langley Kirkwood? Young Langley Kirkwood. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, fuck, Ryan Reynolds is too old. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter what the question is to yeah. two guys. It, it doesn't matter whether who do you want to play you yeah. or who do you want. If you're going to go the other way for just one night or whatever, the answer is always Ryan freaking. It's Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, it's yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Hey, have any of you guys, have you seen uh, Jonathan Tropper's new movie, The Adam Project? Yes. Oh, I have not yeah. watched it. I watched it last night. It was so How good. was it? So oh. good. 
Yeah, yeah, my friend so said good. he cried. Makes me laugh and cry at the same time. Left in the house. And if, you got, if, if you've got any kind of daddy issues, oh boy. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah, oh, you know no, I'm not going to watch Great. it. Great. Oh, man. No, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. It's it's amazing. Uh, it's, you know it's what? Just, maybe. Maybe we'll do get, a senior watch party and we'll we'll all we'll all watch it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah do that. It's it's so good to watch. It's so oh, good. Man. You just oh. make sure there's some some Kleenex nearby. I'm so <laughs> happy for him though. Like, I, I mean, I I I I, did, I discovered the first time I found uh, JT was <laughs> you was discovered on, JT? I did. <laughs> Holy it shit! Was, uh, it was bad to me. And I felt like, you know, as a comedian, yes. I felt like I was the only person in the world that was watching it as it was yeah. on the air um, right. and, oh. and watching every week, you know, and I'm not going to say how I managed to watch it in Canada. It was okay. legal. D yeah, um, don't tell but, me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that was... I said it with my kids as well. It's just, <laughs> just don't tell me. Just <laughs> Right. Um, but, but I always say, I, I put, I'm watching that show JT's character writing and the the depth in his character right up there with Aaron Sorkin. Uh, Sorkin, yeah. I think he's honestly he's one phenomenal. of the top three writers yeah. in the world. And yeah. we saw that when he took over on C. We see mm. it uh, on mm -hmm. Bench. We see it here on Warrior. And now the Adam Project. I mean, and he's Justin funny. <laughs> he's so fucking funny as well. He's, some of the, the, the his lines are just so quick and witty and and he is he's a deeply funny human being. But um and and there there's a lot of there's a lot of humor in the Adam project but there's also some really good stuff, some really good art stuff as well. So yeah. great. Give it a watch. I might have to watch oh, that tonight. Give it a watch. Yeah. yeah um, okay, where are my tissue? Where are my tissues? Fi <laughs> final 3. Here we go. Um living or dead person you'd love to sit down and pick their brain. Mm. 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 Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, there's, there's so many people. For, um, Nelson Mandela. Oh, oh wow. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, mm. wow. I like, um, that is a well, good the impact's got to be that much even more for, for Langley, though, being in mm. South African, right? So, yeah. I mean, being there, being a part of it, we we all see it from the other side of the world and yeah. see it through how television portrays it. But to yeah. actually live through that, I mean, mm. and I, you know what I would want to ask him uh, yeah. is how he felt about having the Mandela effect named after him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think that's a legit question. I yeah. I would really love to know. Hmm. Sorry, man. Like, where's no. Where's my Where's my check for you <laughs> using my name? Probably not the way that I would want to. So, um, <laughs> let's do. Finally, almost name three yep. positive things about yourself. Uh. Oh. Um. Wow. Okay. Three positive things about myself. I try to be the best dad that I can be every day. Mm. I try to be the best human I can be every day. And I don't beat myself up when I fail. At all wow. Things. Wow. I'm applauding that. And I'm not even done yet. Wow, that was good. I like that. <laughs> That was really good. And finally, because we got to end on a silly ass note. If you had a theme song every single time you walked into a room, what song would play? <laughs> um, are we talking like ideal me or real me? <laughs> um, you know what? You could have one it, let's do both. So ideal you what would walk what what would play and then real you what would play. So go ahead. Okay. So both. the ideal me uh probably be this is why I'm hot. <laughs> Mims? Okay. All right. I like that. And uh real me. It would probably be 
I don't know, like the Looney Tunes soundtrack. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm just so happy you didn't go with Cardi B. I thought he was going to drop Cardi B next. I was like, no, he's not. He isn't. Man, I'm not going to lie. Those are the best answers ever for two theme songs. So it sounds like it just the answers in the rooms that he gets into, right? Yeah, you know, I, um, kind of- I, I, uh, I just, I had a friend who, and a colleague who, I uh, will remain nameless, but he threw himself a birth, a big birthday party on a shoot when we were away out of town on location. Okay. And, uh, and he walked into his own birthday party and he threw a big party for us. And he walked in to, this is why I'm hot. And I just thought, man, that's so <laughs> this is why I'm hot. <laughs> so now, so now here's the trick is you write that into your story. <laughs> that is now part of your movie. No, that's that's the opening credit song. That's the opening <laughs> thing. And he just like starts fucking going. That's, that's good. This Forget, is Peacemaker. Why... Forget Peacemaker's opening. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, that, that cracks we me up. Cre- we better get producer credits on that now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and no, gentlemen. Uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Fairpoint is officially part of the Hop This Way Tong. Congratulations, Yay! Yay! Welcome on board. board. Uh, Great job, indeed. Uh, Some great questions there from the fans and, of course, uh, from the rest of the Tong here. Uh, Do you have anything to say as the newest member of the Tong? Hey, man, just stay safe and uh, stay positive and uh, look after yourself. And thanks for having me on. It was great fun. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. All of us here at the Hop This Way show. And from, of course, Mr. Langley Kirkwood, one of the baddest mofos on Warrior and one of the nicest people on the planet. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all.